I don't need a Mac Mini. I don't need a Mac Mini. A Mac Mini be pretty cool. I'm gonna get a Mac Mini. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Cobra Pit. Whether you're a longtime viewer or a newer subscriber like Ryden Curtis, I see you. I appreciate every single one of you. I started with iMovie on my 2015 MacBook Pro, which is a free app. Then I made about six videos with PowerDirector on an Android phone. I think that was like $5.99 a month or something like that, or you could pay for a yearly subscription. Then I moved to the $30 LumaFusion on my iPad Pro, and that's where I spent most of my time. I got pretty comfortable and efficient using the Apple Pencil and my fingers to edit and export my 4K files. And it's good enough, it gets the job done, but it's not perfect. Some issues include freezing during scrubbing and playback. Sometimes clips are muted and you can't tell if there's a problem with your clip or if it's the app. And the only way this can be fixed is if you close and reopen the app. Then that tells you it was the app. Sometimes there's app crashes and longer than desired export times. The reason why the long export time bugs me is because I can't do anything else on my iPad while it does this. If I close this app or just leave it to go somewhere else, it will stop the export, which, you know, slows down my whole workflow. So when I read that the M1 Mac Mini could run iPad apps, I started researching how Luma would work for it. I plan on eventually getting Final Cut Pro, but after spending $30 for Luma and being very familiar with it, I decided to get my money's worth and try it out on the Mac Mini. I went with the 16 gigabytes of memory, 256 gigabyte storage version for a few reasons. More RAM is always great, and the new Mac Mini M1 doesn't allow upgradable memory. This is also true of storage, but I have a NAS to hold all of my media, so I don't really need to buy the higher storage options. So how is LumaFusion on the Mac Mini? Well, there's good and bad. Well, starting with the good, it runs smoothly. I haven't had any of the freezing or muted clip issues that I had on the iPad. It makes it an overall more pleasant experience regardless of how congested my timeline is. It's very frustrating trying to edit and you can't tell if it's a mistake in an app or your own video clip. So this is definitely a plus. When it comes to export time, I use the same seven and a half minute 4K 4.26 gigabyte video and ran them simultaneously on the iPad and the mini. Surprisingly, it took the mini 35 seconds longer now this is not such a big deal because while this is writing, I can do other things on the mini, which I can't do on the iPad. I also like using my 4K monitor to edit my 4K footage. Yes, I could also hook up a 4K monitor to my iPad, but it's a little more clunky. The iPad has mouse support, but it's very limited. I use the MX Master 3 for Mac during editing and having customizable shortcut keys on the mouse is such a time saver. Like I said, some of the actions work on the iPad, but it's not as seamless. And time for the not so good. Number one, Luma Fusion made my whole Mac Mini crash and restart. I don't know why this happened, but it did happen three times. It was almost a deal breaker. I was running other programs, but the reason I think it was a Luma Fusion problem was that it hasn't happened since I installed the latest update. This made me very concerned for the well-being of my computer. So hopefully those bug fixes in the notes address this. I will update this if it does come back. Let me know if any of you have some of the same issues because I can't find this anywhere else on the internet or maybe I'm not looking hard enough. Secondly, the add link to folder option is not working yet. Now this makes the process of adding files that much easier. Yes, you can still access photos and drag and drop files into the shared folder but it's not as seamless as adding a link. Those are the main issues that I've come across, but the big question is, is it worth it to get a Mac Mini to edit using LumaFusion? I would say if you already have an iPad Pro, stick with it and at least get a keyboard. I've been using the Logitech MX Keys for Mac and it's been a dream. I love the shortcut keys, but having the Apple Pencil is somewhat efficient in its own right. And of course, the portability of the iPad is a plus. But if you don't have an iPad or you have an older one, 
or if you were like me and were in the market for a new computer, then you might want to look at getting the Mac One Mini, Mac Mini M1. Luma Fusion works nicely with it. It's a great editing app with a relatively low price, especially versus Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro. Now, obviously the Mini can do so much more than run editing apps and I love the speed, multitasking, customizability, and overall performance of the Mini. Comment your thoughts, let me know what you think about this, and don't forget, Cobra told you. All right, y'all.